I want to show you one more rational problem that's going to give you some issues. And it's something that's going to look like this. Now remember, we saw these problems. We're going to say, well, the first thing I need to do is move everything to one side. Like this. And I say, well, this is really exciting because, you know, I'm going to do this off the side because this isn't right. I'm going to say, well, look, I've got this. So that must be equal to that, or I don't know, something like that. This is what a lot of people do. Say blah, 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 because it's plus one, minus two, so it must be minus one. No, just, just, no. That's not right. It's not right for the same reason that you would not say this. You wouldn't, hopefully, never think of thinking that that was true. Seven halves minus three, you wouldn't go seven minus three is four over two. You see the connection? See how that's the same logic? Same logic, and it's bad both ways. Plus one, minus two is minus one. Seven minus three is four. It's, you can't do this. You can't do it in fractions, and you can't do it even if you got funky fractions. So if it doesn't work for normal fractions, it's not gonna work for funky fractions. So how would you solve this for, for real? How would you solve that for real? You say, oh, I need a common denominator, right? So. I'll go ahead and even I'm going to write out every single step just to make sure you guys say, well, I have this, and I need a common denominator. My common denominator will be 2, right? So the 7 will stay the same, and then to get from the 3 over 1 to something over 2, to get from 1 to 2, to multiply by 2, multiply the top and the bottom by the same number. So 3 over 1 is the same thing as 6 over 2. So the answer is 7 minus 6 over 2, or 1 half, right? So, I mean, I think that you should probably be pretty decent at adding fractions by now. Um, it's pretty much required for this class. So you need to apply that same logic to the algebra. And I think that's where the disconnect sometimes happens, is we just get so excited about doing algebra that you know, our imagination carries us away. So we want to find what is going on here. So we've got x plus 1 over x plus 3 minus 2. I'm going to write it like this, right? That's completely legitimate. 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. I still need to find a common denominator. So think back to what you would do with regular numbers. Anytime you're confused at what's going on, on algebraically, think, well, what would I do if these were just normal numbers and didn't have x's in them? And that's what you should do with x's. So a common denominator for these guys. One has x plus 3 on the bottom, and one has 1 on the bottom. So what do I need to have on the bottom of both of them? Think about this. Common denominator for each one of these is going to be x plus 3. If, if nothing else, multiply the two numbers together and use that as your common denominator. So that's going to be the same thing. But how do I get from 1 to x plus 3? 1 times what is x plus 3? 1 times what is x plus 3? 1 times x plus 3. Right? 1 times x plus 3 is going to get us to the x plus 3. So if I'm going to multiply x plus 3 on the bottom, I better multiply it on the top. And then I'll get my 2x plus 6. So that's the first part that can go wrong. The next part that can go wrong on this problem is you could do something silly with your minus sign. So you cannot just go x plus 1 minus 2x plus 6. Right? You can't do that, remember, because you have to distribute the negative. It's minus that whole thing. Minus that whole thing. So minus that whole thing. Now for some people, they like to think about it as a minus 1 times 2x plus 6. Because then they say, well, I'll distribute the minus 1 across. If that's what you need to do it, fine. If you can just say, I'll just distribute the negative across, do it that way. But if you're not distributing that negative, if you're not distributing that negative 1 somehow, you're going to do all this work for nothing. The good news is, is if you're using the hybrid method, you'll be graphing it, you'll be initializing it by hand, and then graphing it on your calculator. If your graph on your calculator doesn't line up with your numbers, you either graphed it wrong, 
or your numbers are wrong. So um, that would be a really good way to realize, okay, well, you know, if your lines don't match up on your graph, and you could say, oh, 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 okay, I get it. I forgot to distribute the negative. Um, so look for the problems in your homework. Um, don't just say, oh, it doesn't match. Uh, I guess I'm just going to skip this problem. Go find out what you did wrong and, and, and really have a, an excitement for, oh, excitement's a rare word, but, you know, go figure it out. So I've got this. Like that. So I'm going to have my top and then at my bottom. They're short so I can fit them in here. So I've got minus x minus 5 is 0 and x plus 3 is 0. So I'm going to be a little funky here and I'm going to add x to both sides. I've got x equals minus 3. So am I going to include this point here on the top? Yeah, I'm going to include it because I've got this created M sign. Am I going to include the point on the bottom? No, I'm not going to include it because I don't divide by zero. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get this going. I've got my zero and a negative three and a negative five. I'm including the negative five, but I'm not including the negative three. So, how many sections do I have? I have one. Oops, it's not red. I have one, two, three. I have three sections. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and draw my little line right here. And go, and go like this. And draw in my section so I kind of know what I'm looking at. And uh, now I'm ready to graph. Now when I graph, I'm going to graph this part. I'm going to graph it before I do anything funky with it because I know for sure this is right. Does that make sense? I know this is right because I am totally capable of subtracting two from both sides. The rest of this stuff may be a little bit more questionable, but I'm going to graph this because that's what I know is right. That way I can check. You know, if I graph this and it doesn't match what I did later, then I'm probably pretty sure that what I did later I did wrong because... I just don't have. Well, okay. I have total confidence I did it right, but um, if you haven't been doing this for like ever, like it's okay not to have total confidence that you're doing it right. That's why we try to give you as many, you know, double checks as possible. So I'm going to do this plus three and then minus two. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this. And I can see my three sections. I've got section one, section two, and section three. And it's lining up right about, see, one, two, three. So there's my three, four, five. So negative three and negative five, that's where the transition's happening. I mean, I'm pretty confident now that, that I did that right, so that's good. Um, so I have a, a down. I have a down. And then I have an above that's an asymptote. Remember the word asymptote? Maybe? A down, and I have an above. And then all the rest of everything else is below. All the rest of everything else is below. So again, for my actual solution, I'm looking for greater than or equal to zero. So is this section here greater than? No, it's below the line. The next section is greater than. That was a terrible line. The next section is greater than, so I'm going to include it. Oh, come on now. <laughs> the last section is greater than, so I'm going to include it. And then the middle section I'm going to say. Then the last section is less than, so I don't include it. So my solution is going to go from negative 5 to negative 3 with a bracket and a parenthesis. And I've got that problem solved.